talk about big techs. Burn, baby. Yeah. Like, um, first of all, for people who don't yeah. you know, live in Texas, like, let's explain what big techs is. Big techs is the mascot for the Texas State Fair. And he's about 60 feet tall. And he's he's the, he's an icon. Of and he's course. animatronic. He's animatronic. And he would say, hey. howdy. He would wave and go like this. Howdy, y'all. And, uh, you know, had the mm -hmm. little jaw moving. It, it was a, it used to be a Santa Claus for Neiman Marcus, which is Neiman Marcus is very Dallas, you know, yeah. and, uh, it's so it's like, it's got a, so much Dallas history invited into it. And, um, then, um, I was actually painted myself as him before he burned mm -hmm. because I, I often identify or people identify me with, uh, murder puppets because of my cute good looks i guess and uh so like i've always been a murder puppet in my entire life and uh kids on the playground would uh when the movie magic came out they would make me say a line from it hocus pocus take her to bed hocus pocus she's dead and, and they would like <laughs> pick on me until i said it and i took my i took all my some young cousins and my little brother to see chucky yeah. and, and then like they, they were like called me chucky i've been so many and so i'm like and crappy the elf i've been an elf plenty of times but when uh, before big text burned i was putting my face on him mm -hmm. and paintings and um and then he burned and i'm like how could i not take that you know as mine yeah. and um there was, it's, it's, it is it is quite a few artists here do big text work mm -hmm. and i i think i do it um gallery style bigger than they do of course but um because I, I i make a whole show of various size paintings some are banner size and they're and they're and they're all a point of view with, and i create like 32 images so i, I would have to paint 32 images mm -hmm. of and i i always did um his figure my figure spinning because i wanted it to have a a um infinite time to it because the spinning always the spin repeats yeah and, and um if it was just burning down straight with a forward it would not be as as an attractive as a show i guess but some people would just get black burned up stuff you know? right <laughs> and it would just burn and then reignite and burn and 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 that's just 20 there's 24 frames per second and so i can eke out 12 frames per second so i would just have a one second video of him burning but yeah. infinite spinning burning loop is uh forever in time you know yeah and, there's uh, also like the experience when you're there at the state fair it's yeah. three-dimensional so you you are you do walk around him you do you walk around him like, and he's in a little circular kind of garden area and like you know there's the one behind you that's got the concentric rings like mm -hmm. earlier when you were talking about like just or we were talking about like the sort of levels of of personal identity and masks mm -hmm. and whatnot in your work I was thinking of the concentric circles in that context oh. but now you've just sort of taken it to another place where it's like this sort of infinity Thing, you know it's mm -hmm. just like if you if you view a concentric circle as three-dimensional like you're looking down yeah tube of sorts or an expanding spiral that you're looking down into or something what what else is the the um i mean i love tornadoes we all love tornadoes in texas right but yeah. we don't want one no <laughs> but, but i mean it's it's kind of he's kind of a tornado in that situation too just yeah shoot. Yeah. And um, people were upset with the new text, big text when he came out. A lot of racism came out because they thought it, they thought he's browner and, and that was a bad thing or something. And it, I, I think it, they didn't do a very good job Hoover did the, the new face. Honestly, it's horrible. But <laughs> the uh, uh, Larry Hagman died about the same year and he is Dallas as right. well. Right. I thought, and he has a great face. They should have made it his face. Yeah. Honestly. 
Yeah. They should have they should have done a tribute to Larry Hagman. When yeah. I was a kid, I had a, a ringer t-shirt that had mm-hmm. his face, but it was like a dot matrix printout of his face. Larry Hagman's face? Oh uh, yeah, Larry Hagman as JR with the yeah. hat and everything. And then in like iron-on velvet letters underneath it said I shot JR. Yeah. And yeah. that was like my favorite shirt. Like I wore that all the time. Dallas was put on the map. Yeah, with, yeah. You know, uh, it was an international hit. I mean, I mean, just bus loads of airplane loads of people coming over to see South Park, right. <laughs> South South Fork. That's it, South, South Fork, Fork. <laughs> yeah. and uh, and all that. Um, yeah, he he's he's he should have been he should have been the face. Yeah, or you? I still am the face. You are still the face. <laughs> now, I, I used to, I used to um, every once in a while get um, when we go to Deep Ellum to hear music. I would somebody would yell out, "Hey, it's Little Tex or Big Tex," which was always made me feel good to be recognized for your art outside of a gallery. And, yeah. Uh, but one time, this was even better for me. I, I I I have done a crappity elf character as well, seasonal, you know. Yeah. And uh, some I, I, the bartender recognized me as, "Hey." you're that mean little elf. And I just felt like a rock star, you know? Wow. I should get a free drink from that, but I didn't. <laughs> that seems like a, a, you know, definite oversight. You should, totally should have. <laughs> they should probably cut my bar tab off. Yeah. Um, yeah. It feels like you've gotten a lot of um, attention for the big tech stuff. Like, you know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Last tires done some stuff. We um, we have been lucky. I've been lucky. We've been lucky to um get a lot of attention from Glass Tire and uh, they did they did um one of their top fives was uh the uh top five of Texas themed artist. Uh-huh. And, yeah, I remember uh, that one. I was number one and I was yeah. so happy because uh Mel Casas was up there and uh-huh. he passed away a long time ago, but he was the the head of the art department at, at at San Antonio College. And I thought to be on that list with him. Yeah. And um but we 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 do we do get press. We do get press. We we don't get grants really. We don't we don't get museum collected and um I think there's a certain part of I'm I'm happy for all of it, always. But mm-hmm. there's a certain way that sometimes it's approached where we're always lovable weirdos, you know, or yeah. or go see some weird art, and 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 that's kind of what we are, and anyway. and never like going into the the sort of darker stuff that's in there <laughs> too, you know, because that's definitely. I mean, we just spent an hour and 20 minutes talking about a lot of that. So, yeah. Um, so do you feel like you, your work is kind of oversimplified often? Um, I think um, whatever helps. I, I, I think sometimes um, being in a gay relationship is still strange for people. Because mm-hmm. um, um, we have we have a little bit of a. Um, bitterness in ways sometimes about just always being labeled the weirdos or something yeah. and uh the weird entertainment right or the party yeah. people and um but there was a sh- a group show uh called um it was it was about uh it was uh people in relationships making work together mm-hmm. and and making work for a show it's called it was called uh dynamic duos yeah uh, we weren't included <laughs> so i'm like what yeah you know, yeah I, that seems like an oversight i don't know of very many collaborate long-term collaborative artists that you know and, and i think some of these people after the show got divorces so <laughs> you know yeah i mean i when you were saying that about like that people kind of latch on to that quality I was I was thinking that part of it may be sort of the rarity of the fact that people who are in a relationship with each other 
also are collaborating, you know, artistically with each other and, um, and not murdering each other. Yeah. You know, like, um, there's like the combination of all of three of those things is rare. Like, you know, um, I feel lucky for that. Yeah. 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 Um, um, there's a it's, a, it's a lot of fun to have a, a person that makes you, helps you make those decisions, mm -hmm. you know, art wise. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you, you know, you have the same friends for the most part, we have different friends. Yeah. Sometimes. But uh, it's. Uh, and, and who gets you on that level. Yeah. You know, it's not always smooth, always, but you yeah. know, we fight a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, I, I, I'll say I've definitely had some, some challenges just like dating people who who just don't value art yeah yeah and and that's just not gonna work no no you know? so oh, are you are you doing your coloring is that what you're doing <laughs> yeah Sorry. or that every neat thing needs to be given away for free or that you yeah. know whatever it is it's just yeah it's it's very um it's, it's strange to have to put value on it, it's still hard to, I mean, we, we did about 20 years of professional art murals mm -hmm. and things like that. And, um, putting value on that is different. Um, yes. putting value on something you're making for these personal reasons. And then it's your, it's, you feel egotistical, you feel like, like like what I felt like when I had that uh, show during the pandemic. It's like, who the fuck cares if I have a show, you know, during the pandemic, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like the world is shit, you know, what am I doing here? But am I feel I like that. Um, I mean, for, for me personally, art was the, the saving grace yeah. through, through that time. Like, there are some artists that I discovered during the pandemic that are like going to be like in my favorite artists of all time for the rest of my life, probably. And I had yeah. never heard of them, you know, six months earlier, but um, like whatever they were doing had like such an impact. And I, and I needed that at that time, like I needed that kind of connection um, and I think that the art, I mean, if you expand the arts to include film and music and television, like all of that, like, I think that's probably true for most people. Like the arts saved a lot of people during that time of isolation. Uh -huh. And that's something that is, um, it's not small. It's not a small thing. I mean, it's, it's kind of the timing of this conversation is interesting because like just two hours before you and I were talking, I posted a, an excerpt from a video that I did with, um, Alan, you, who's, um, a landscape architect and ceramicist in Austin. And the part of the conversation that I, I pulled out and then posted, uh, was all about this whole thing of like um, of the the perceived value of fine art versus mm -hmm. you know other creative endeavors and yeah. then the challenge that artists have like on a on a personal level with like kind of claiming claiming that worth like no what I am creating does have value and then like that struggle with like God, there's so much stuff in the world that's going on that's really important. And here I am doing this thing and who cares, you know, yeah. like it's all wrapped up in it. Um, but um, I mean, it, 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 it's it's that playtime. Yeah. So I'm doing a lot of air quotes tonight. It's that playtime as a child that is that I had by myself of creating, escape, yeah. creating a different space, a different place you know in my mind or getting revenge on somebody in a drawing yeah. <laughs> so it's like that's where we have our power that's where it we is. have that's where we find our truth and i mean 
Yeah. Right? I mean, joy and play are their kind, their own kind of medicine. I uh -huh. mean, that's what we, we need more of those things in the world, you know, even if it feels like, um, like you shouldn't be doing that because yeah. other people are suffering or you may be suffering too, you know, in, in certain ways, but like, um, so there's, there's that aspect of it, but it's also like what you just said, like it's creating something new, like like if we if the world is a total clusterfuck and we don't want it to be the way that it is like we need to have creativity and and coming up with like what are like if we don't like it what are we going to create that's different and better and um we're just going to go punk rock on everything yeah you know? <laughs> exactly <laughs> so i mean i just yeah i just come back to like all of this even though it is sorely unrecognized that I think this mechanism is happening, that like art helps people deal with all of their shit uh -huh. and like on a personal level, but then like once you put it out there and people, people are going to interact with it in the way that's appropriate for them and their shit, you know, or it's inspiring and helps, you know, motivate people to like want to do create something new in in their world or i mean there's so many aspects oh, it, it can make you angry and and you're like yeah yeah because that's in the gallery you know and you're just, it's like i can yeah, do better yeah. like everybody right can, so. <laughs> right <laughs> i could you know uh, or you know it's you gotta have fun even in the uh the part where you pretend to be jealous and in envy, you know, and 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 uh, angry about something, and uh, it's it's all part of it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Thanks, like thanks for doing this. Like you know, when I first started this, I was just totally kind of a lark. I didn't really know what I was doing. It kind of came about from watching a talk with Renee, and Renee was somebody who I really had wanted to get to know mm -hmm. better, and so when she was as enthusiastic about it as she was that kind of like gave me some fire to this and I've kind of I I realized like it's an opportunity on many levels but it's also like one of the things is that it's an opportunity to like to just reconnect with people and have conversations in a way that like we don't usually have because we're at a party or we're you know yeah. whatever or you're just you're just talking about life stuff and you're not necessarily talking about art or you know it was just really this was great so thank you it was great i appreciate the opportunity yeah we're uh, friends again no, just hey we're real friends <laughs> we're real friends i mean i always considered you a friend but even oh. though we hadn't had a it a, a long one-on-one -on -one conversation it was like you know both both of y'all it's y'all are y'all have always been in my sort of periphery core mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes it's uh you were a fembot at halloween where you know yeah, yeah yeah sometimes when you when you have your friends at halloween you don't you don't see them because they're dressed up <laughs> right i think in the i think in the video i'm gonna have to show some Halloween costume photos and including the one where Scott came as the flaming big Tex. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I was flying spaghetti monster that year. And that was the same year where there was that, the, the monkey Jesus uh, thing in Spain happened. Yeah. Oh, that was you know what I'm yeah. talking about. And I don't know who it was when somebody came to your party in Our like friend, Mary. perfect she wins yeah. oh my god it was it was so good i was like i was like all all the costumes always are amazing but that year in particular i was like everybody's bringing it home yeah, yeah. i i kind of miss the halloween party in a way but um the last one we had here at our house was fantastic mm -hmm. and i just did not want to have them at my house again yeah uh, we had them 
um, outside of the house. And we had one at the, our gallery and our show the last time, but we came so late, we barely made it. Yeah. Because, um, you know, we're not, we're not, uh, what do you call it? Spring chickens or. <laughs> I know. I hear you. Yeah. Hear when you, you. Set, setting up a party at a, at a location other than your house is a lot of work. Yeah. And I really want anybody's listening out there. I really want to be invited to a really good Halloween party. And I'm going to just like squeeze on, squeeze myself into that invitation, <laughs> insinuate myself into this invitation, please. Yes. Um, I, I want, I want to just come in a costume and not have to have the party. Right. You know? Yeah. But, um, I mean, I feel like that usually at those parties, like a lot of the people are artists. And so the costumes are just oh. amazing oh. and, um, so creative and, and usually like handmade and, um, it's like the party itself is art. It the is. House, yes. The house you live in is art. Your life has been a movie and will be art it's just like you're you're kind of the the total package you know well thank you yes you're welcome 